Hi guys and welcome to this video. Kina here and I'm going to take you through the solution to question 10 from this Leaving Cert higher level paper. Now this is one of the longer questions and it's worth 50 marks and this question is based on indices and logarithms and it also has a bit of calculus as well. So let's get right into it. We're basically told that a student is asked to memorize a long list of digits and write down the list sometime later. So the proportion P of the digits recalled correctly after T hours can be modeled by the following function. And the following function is P of T. So the proportion of digits is equal to 0.82 minus 0.12 ln T plus 1. So question A asks us to find the proportion of the digits recalled correctly after three hours. So T is going to be three according to this model and we're asked to give our answer correct to two decimal places. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the model. So that is P of T, but we know that T is three hours, is equal to 0 0.82 minus 0 0.12 ln T plus one. Again, we know that T is three, so we're going to say three plus one. So P of 3 is equal to, and I'm going to throw this into the calculator, so 0.82 minus 0.12 ln 3 plus 1, which is 4, is equal to 0 0.65. And it asks us to give our answer correct two decimal places, so this is perfect, and that is worth 5 marks. Now it asks for the proportion. If it asked for the percentage, make sure to change this to 65%. Because it asked for the proportion, we can leave it as it is. In this question for the marking scheme this year, you would also get full marks if you changed it into a percentage, but just be careful to know the difference between the proportion and the percentage. Now, question B asks us, after how many hours would exactly 55% of the digits be recalled correctly according to the model? And we're asked to give our answer correct to two decimal places. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the model that we're given at the start. So that was P of T, and we don't know what T is, is equal to 0.82 minus 0.12 ln T plus 1. And that now is equal to 0 0.55 because 55% of the digits are recalled correctly after this amount of time. Now we need to work out what T is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over to the other side. So I'm going to be left with 0.12 ln T plus 1 is equal to 0.55 minus 0.82. And let's work out what that is. And that is minus 0.27. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of this here. So I want to be left with ln of T plus 1. And that's going to be equal to minus 0.27 divided by minus 0.12. So ln of t plus 1 is going to be equal to 2.25. Now, there's a very important rule that I would definitely recommend that you try to remember for your leaving cert, okay? When you're dealing with lns, that if you have ln of a is equal to b, then that can be written as a is equal to e to the power of b. So this isn't directly in your log tables, but this is definitely something that I would try to learn off by heart because it really comes in handy when you're dealing with LNs in the exam paper. So T plus 1 is our A and 2.25 is our B, as you can see here. So T plus 1 is equal to E to the power of 2.25. So T plus 1 is equal to what? Find E in your calculator. For me, I need to press alpha and I need to press in the middle of the bottom row to get E and then put it to the power of 2.25. And I get 9.487. So T is equal to 9.487 minus 1. So T is going to be equal to 8.487. But we're asked to give it correct to two decimal places. So T is equal to 8.49 hours. And what does that mean in the context of the question? That means that after 8.49 hours, the students will be able to recall 55% of the digits. So that is our answer for this question. And this is worth 10 marks. Now in question C, they're introducing a bit of calculus when we're asked to find the value of P-1. The first derivative of P of T and then fill in T for 1. First of all, I'm going to write in P of T. So that was 0 0.82 minus 0.12 ln T plus 1. Now you can use your log tables if you're not sure of the rules for deriving L of N or LN. So on page 25 here, you can see that the first derivative of LN of X is one over X. So P dash T is going to be equal to, we can leave this out because it's a constant. We can keep in 0.12 because it's part of the second term. And then LN of T plus one is going to become one over T plus one. So P dash T is equal to minus 0.12 
all over t plus 1. Now what is p dash 1? It's going to be minus 0.12 divided by 1 plus 1. And let's pop this into the calculator. And that is minus 0 0.06. So that's our answer. And for this question, you are going to get 10 marks actually between these two questions. So I'm just going to go through the second part of the question now as well. The second part tells us that P dash T is always negative for T is between 0 and 12. And what does this tell you about the proportion of digits recalled correctly after T hours according to the model? So basically we're told that the first derivative of PT is less than zero. It's always negative, it's always less than zero. So this means that, because that's negative, as T increases, the proportion of digits recalled decreases. So as the time increases, or as time goes on, the proportion, which is P, decreases. If P dash T was positive, that would mean that as T increases, the proportion also increases. So as I said, for C part one and two, you're going to get 10 marks here. In part D, we're asked to show or use calculus to show that the graph of y is equal to pt has no points of inflection for 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 12. Now, in a point of inflection, the second derivative of p of t will be equal to 0. So we need to show that this doesn't exist for this particular graph. So we know what pt is. We found the first derivative, p dash t, in question C part 1, and that was minus 0.12 all over t plus 1. Now let's find the second derivative and let it equal to 0. So I'm going to rewrite the first derivative to make it easier for me to find the second derivative. I'm going to rewrite it as minus 0.12 multiplied by 1 over t plus 1 and I'm going to rewrite it again. I'm going to rewrite it as minus 0.12 multiplied by t plus 1 power of minus 1. So now let me find the second derivative. So p dash dash t is going to be equal to we keep the minus 0.12 and then here we bring the minus 1 down in front of the t plus 1 and we reduce it further. Now let's put this back together. So we know that, so that's equal to minus 0.12 multiplied by minus 1 over t plus 1 to the power of 2. So p dash dash t is equal to minus 0.12 over minus t plus 1 squared and that can be written as 0.12 over t plus 1 squared, because we had a negative on the top and the bottom, so they cancel each other out. Now, this is the second derivative, so let's let it equal to 0. Now let's multiply this up here. So the bottom of the left-hand side, we can bring it up as a multiple here. So it's going to be 0.12 is equal to 0, because when you multiply 0 by t plus 1 squared, it's just going to be 0. So we're left with 0.12 is equal to 0. But it's not equal to 0, so that's a contradiction. Therefore there are no points of inflection. POI stands for points of inflection. So we've proved that there are no points of inflection by finding the second derivative and letting it equal to zero. Now, we're told that if we learn a skill, basically, if we don't practice, your level of the skill is going to decrease as time goes on. And we're told that this effect can be modeled by the following equation, a is equal to b multiplied by t plus one to the power of c. We're told that a is a measure of how well the skill can be done at a certain time, b is a measure of how well the skill can be done t months later without practicing, and c is a constant. We're asked to write c in terms of log to the base 10 of a, log to the base 10 of b, and log to the base 10 of t plus 1. So there's two ways of going about this, and I'm going to go through both of them briefly. So let's start with the original equation. And the original equation is a is equal to b t plus 1 to the power of c. Let's put both sides of this equation after log to the base 10. So log to the base 10 of a is equal to log to the base 10 of b multiplied by t plus 1 to the power of c. Now let's go to our log tables and see the rule which we're going to use here. And that is this rule here, log to the base a of x, y is equal to log to the base a, x plus log to the base a of y. In this context, we have log to the base 10 of b multiplied by t plus 1c. So x is b and y is t plus 1c. So we can split them up and add them. So we're going to be left with log to the base 10 of a is equal to log to the base 10 of b plus log to the base 10 of t plus 1 to the power of c. Now, I'm going to isolate log to the base 10 of t plus 1 to the power of c. 
So I'm going to put this on the left hand side, log to the base 10 of t plus 1 to the power of c. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to have log to the base 10 of a, and that's here. And I'm going to have to bring this over, so it's going to change sign, minus log to the base 10 of b. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring c down here. So I'm going to be left with c by log to the base 10 of t plus 1. And I'm left with log to the base 10 of a minus log to the base 10 of b. Now what I can do is isolate my c and let it equal to log to the base 10 of a minus log to the base 10 of b divided by what's here, which is log to the base 10 of t plus 1. So now we found t in terms of log to the base 10 of a, log to the base 10 of b, and log to the base 10 of t plus 1. So that is worth 10 marks. Now I'm just going to briefly go through a second way of doing it, and you can use the following rule here. So you can use the rule here, a to the power of x is equal to y, log to the base of y is equal to x. And you'll also need to use the following rule here, which is that log to the base b of x is equal to log to the a of x over log to the a b. So I'm just going to rub out what we've done so far, just to go through the second method so I have plenty space. So in the second method, you're still going to have b by t plus 1, c is equal to a. So what you're going to do is you're going to make it into t plus 1 to the power of c is equal to a divided by b. Now you're going to use the rule ax is equal to y log ay is equal to x. So here a is t plus 1, x is c, and then a over b is y. So log of a, which is t plus 1, y, which was a over b is equal to c or is equal to x, which is c. So then we're going to need to use another rule. So this rule is that if you have log to the base a of x divided by y, you can rewrite that as log to the base a of x minus log to the base a of y. So I'm going to rewrite this here as log t plus 1, I'm going to actually let it equal to c. So c is equal to log to the base t plus 1 of a minus log to the base t plus 1 of b. Now I'm going to use the rule that I pointed out earlier and that is that log to the bx is equal to log a to the x all over log a to the b because we want to get our log to the base 10 in here. Now we're left with c is equal to log 10 to the a, so that is log a to the x, all over log a, which is 10, to the b, okay, and this is b here, so t plus 1, minus log a, again, which is 10, to the b, all over log a, which is 10, to t plus 1, so a here can be any number that you want, and this is the same answer that we got the first time, and again, as I said, this is worth 10 marks altogether. So whichever method you go, whichever rules you're most comfortable with following, and with regards to the logarithms and indices, go with those and you should get this answer. Now, the final part of this question, we're told that a student got 80% on a guitar exam, and then after two years of not playing, the student got 47% on that same exam. We're asked to use this to find the value of C in the model above, correct to three decimal places. So the model above, we'll just recall, was A is equal to B, T plus 1 to the power of C, and we're asked to find C. So A is basically how well the student can do a skill after just practicing. So in this case, that is 0.8 or 80%. B is how well the student can do the skill after a certain time of not practicing. So B is equal to 0.47. And T is the time which has passed. So it's two years, but we must remember that T was in months. So two years is 24 months. So let's fill this out. So we have 0.8 is equal to 0.47. T plus 1 is 24 plus 1, which is 25 to the power of C. So now let's divide 0.8 by 0.47 and let that equal to 25 to the power of C. So we have 1.7 is equal to 25 to the power of C. So now let's use ln. So ln of 1.7 is equal to C by ln 25. So C is equal to ln of 1.7 divided by ln of 25, and let's work out what this is. That is 0 0.1648. So correct to three decimal places, that is 0 0.165.
Another method which you could do here is use your answer that you got from E part one. You'll remember that E part one was written in terms of C. So if you just fill in A and B, A and B here, into your answer from E part one, you'll find your answer for C. So that's all for this question, guys. I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I cleared up any questions that you may have had about this question.